Hi everyone, I'm Sergi, application engineer at Shining 3D, and I will be showing you how to scan an object with the Einstar from the start to the end. To do so, um, we launch the software and we make sure calibration is done to get the best results possible. Uh, first thing we are going to do is creating a new project group and we will give it a proper name, say Dwarf. Let's take a look to the options we have for our project. The Einster has two different scan modes. Portrait mode, which you have already seen, is suitable to scan persons, and object mode, which is the one that we will be using now. Being this part a medium part size object, um, we will be selecting the medium and large object for the size option. Um, small objects would be suitable for objects from 50 to 200 millimeters. Regarding the aligning modes, we have different options. Features, texture alignment, hybrid, which combines feature and markers, and finally, global markers for marker alignment. For this part, we will be working with features. As for the resolution, we will be working with the medium resolution, which means 0.5 millimeters for the point distance. And finally, since we want to scan the colors of this part, we will make sure that the toggle button for texture scan is enabled. We are ready now to start our scan. So we click on apply and we enter the scan environment. At this point, we can take our scanner, put the bracelet on, and we can either click on the play button on the back of the scanner or on the start preview button on the screen to start the preview. So I will click it once and I will point to the part. We immediately see on the left of the screen the video feed from the camera and a preview of the data being captured. First thing we need to do is adjusting the brightness of the scan. It depends on both the textures of the part and the light on the ambient light. We need to make sure we see some scattered red areas on the part. We can either control the brightness with the bar on the screen or by double clicking the play button to access the brightness settings with the buttons of, this, of the scanner. This seems like a reasonable value for the brightness. I will exit it again by double clicking the play button. And at this point, we are ready to scan to start scanning. So I will, I will click again on play button and the data capturing begins. On the left side of the screen, you can see a distance indicator, which is going from red to green to blue. I need to make sure during all the scan process that I'm staying within the green distance, which is the optimal distance for the scan. I'm turning the part using this manual turntable and turning the scanner to different orientations to make sure I capture as much data as possible. I pause the scan to admire the data that we have captured so far. We can see the points being captured along with the textures of the part. I can enable now the data quality indicator. This will tell me which regions need to be scanned furthermore in order to have a more quality point cloud. Regions in green are complete. So I will focus on these areas in red and yellow. When I resume the scan, as soon as the data that I, as soon as the statue is, already, is again detected, the alignment takes, takes place and I can resume the scan process. It's likely that the tracking loss occurs. That happens when the software cannot align the data with, with the new data with the data already captured. When this happens, simply move back to some region you have already scanned and the software will <clears throat> resume the scan. By simply rescanning these regions in red, 
we increase the point density, turning them into green, and ensuring the quality of the point cloud is improved. We have captured enough data. Let's disable the data quality indicator. And now it's the time to clean our, our scan. By cleaning, I mean making rid of the table and the turntable below the statue. To do so, I can quickly do it by creating a cutting plane. I will be creating a cutting plane, fitting it with the point clouds. So I will, with the shift button and the left mouse button, I will highlight the data from the turntable to fit a plane there. The data highlighted in red will be removed. I can change the position of this plane to make sure all the desired data is removed. I click on apply to remove the table. It's time now to generate the point cloud. We have two, dif two different options, just generating the point cloud or optimizing and generating the point cloud. The latter is recommended when there are misalignments or layering, but since this scan has been, has been done with high quality, we can gen simply generate the point cloud, which will take less time to process. Our point cloud has been generated, and at this point, we are able to export our scan already as a point cloud in ASCII file format. But since what we want is to obtain a mesh, we need to mesh our data. We click on Mesh Model, and we have three different options to mesh our data. We have the watertight model, which will leave all holes open. We have the semi-watertight model, which will only close the small holes and leave the big holes open. And we have the watertight model, which will close all the holes and the resulting mesh will be a solid object. We are gonna be selecting the watertight mode and we will be using the recommended parameters. So we click on apply and we let the software mesh our data. We have finally obtained our mesh. We can take a second to admire it. And if we are satisfied with the result, we will click on Confirm. We have now accessed the Post-Processing tab. Here we have different options to edit our mesh. We can change the brightness and contrast of, our, of the colors of our mesh. We can simplify it, carry out a mesh optimization, and so on. We will be using the cutting plane tool to make this mesh a flat bottom mesh. To use it, we will define a straight line with the shift key and the left mouse button. This will define a plane that we can use to intersect the mesh. If we select the option delete and close at the intersection, we will remove the data in red and close it with the plane. We can also use this plane to align the mesh directly to the coordinate system. Just click on Align. Finally, click on Confirm to exit the tool. And now, as you can see, the mesh is aligned to the coordinate system. Before saving the mesh, we will remap the colors so these triangles in blue on the bottom are filled with color. We run the text to remapping. And now we are able to save our mesh 
in any of the most popular file formats for the mesh. And that's all. That's the complete process from start to finish to scan an object with the Einstar. I hope you found it informative.